Hello everyone and welcome back to Flight Sim 2020 where I'm going to take a look at the DC Designs F-14. It was recently released yesterday and it is published by Just Flight and available through their website. This is version 1.0 and we have two versions, the F-14 and the F-14B. So taking a look at aircraft selections, there's the F-14A and the F-14B. And we have various liveries for the F-14A as you can see, which are different from the liveries for the F-14B. I'm actually going to go with the VF-142 because I think it matches a model of the F-14 that I used to have when I was a kid. So, uh, yeah, I'll go with that. Uh, this uh, F-14B, this uh, texture is slightly different. And that's for the VF-143. And then we have these two as well. So... Yeah, but back to the F-14A, and what I want to do is test its range and capabilities. Uh, I previously tried out the DC Designs F-15, and I was critical of it initially because it couldn't get past Mach 1. Frankly, that was the main thing. Eventually, they fixed that, and I'm sure that's not a problem for the F-14 here. And I want to test its range mainly. So we're going to fill it full of fuel. You can see that it indicates a possible range all across the country. So, I mean, that's a... That's interesting. I don't think we're going to get that far because I am going to have the afterburners on like the entire way. I, I want to go fast. So we'll see how far we get going fast. As you can see, I've plotted some potential stopover points uh, depending on how well we're doing on our range. And so I'll land somewhere else if it turns out that we can't get so far. But we'll push it to its limits. I'm sure I won't fly it perfectly efficiently the first time around because I don't know what the optimal climb is. Uh, for those who say, well, why even bother with the F-14 in Flight Sim? Uh, you know, you should get it for DCS World. I have it for DCS World. <laughs> and uh, that costs twice as much as this. This costs $35, so it's cheaper than the F-15 was. So I'll be more forgiving on that note as well. Okay, outside. Okay, that's delivery I wanted. Very nice. Okay, so taking a look at the cockpit, we got uh, some nice wear on the front there. Um, this looks like the F-14 cockpit uh, reasonably well. The side switches are not going to work like a study sim one would be. I'd say the wear and tear on the left panel uh, seems a bit... It's a bit weird. Um, it's a bit weird. I don't know how exactly to describe it, but... I'll, I'll just leave it at that. Otherwise, uh, looking okay. Looking okay. We'll see whether everything works all right in terms of displays. We see 29,000 pounds of fuel. And the fuel flow indicator is over there. That's most important to me. Because we are dealing with uh, desire to go fast and long range. All right. So here we go. I'll see whether it automatically wing sweeps. I don't know if there's something I need to turn on for that. I already tested the wing sweep. <laughs> Before I even started, I tested whether I could sweep the wings with the wing sweep uh, thing there, and that does work. So uh, we will we'll see how it does. I'm going to get the information displays up. The one thing that's going to be a problem with all these is the afterburner texture. I, I guess nobody can do anything about that. I don't think the F-14 uses afterburner on takeoff from the runway, I forget. It does, it's very sprightly in terms of getting off the ground, you don't really have to pull up. Oh, that, that flap actually uh, went up all on its own too. Well, cool that, I was only using the afterburners to demonstrate the look of the afterburners. Let's see, I'm not going to touch the flaps at all. Or maybe, maybe you have to be slower to retract them? Maybe. Okay, yeah. Oh, it's going too fast. Interesting. I'm pretty sure you can put the flaps down on the F-14 at a higher speed than that, but... Alright. Oh, it's put the flaps down on its own again.
taking a closer look. Yeah, it does have auto flaps. I didn't raise them at all. So it's doing that on its own. We'll see about the wing sweep. Yeah, overall the look is good. I think this looks better than the F-15. Of course, some might be a little bit biased. Interior, the HUD is, well, it's a little bit hard to read, but it's, you know, it is what it is. The altimeter down here is reading 28,000. I think it's moved on. Once it gets, uh, th that's the thing that sometimes happens. Uh, once it gets close to like 20,000, it'll have the tens digit moved on already. So that's a little bit weird, but uh, the fuel quality indicator has been ticking down. The wing sweep is automatic. Interestingly, the manual sweep, if you open it up, uh, um, so if I pull that up, it, it, it says anti-ice engine, <laughs> but I, I don't know why, but we will take it. Once you close the cover, it seems like it goes to auto sweep. Let me verify if we open the cover, it, it sets it to the manual sweep. So I could, I could go all the way back now. Well, what does it happen if I close the cover now? Okay, it goes back to auto, so. That's your wing sweep behavior for you. Alright, we're almost at full sweep. It doesn't do over sweep, as far as I can tell. I tried putting the little manual sweep bar down. Oh, we got a breaking mock effect. Um, but. Yeah, it doesn't do the oversweep for parking. So, let's see our speed indicator here. It's got the Mach indicator working, 1.3 there. Uh, which is good, because I can't really... Oh, I can sort of read it there. 1.4 now. Me and the camera still haven't gotten used to each other yet. <laughs> uh... I wonder if the HUD has my intended direction. It might do. Uh, I think it doesn't, because I think our direction, our course is supposed to be 70 degrees. It's not reading that. So, yeah, I think it's just reading the prograde, the uh, prograde, I say, uh, the forward vector and not really telling us where we're supposed to be going there. At least we have this one, which is easier to read down here. HUD brightness. Oh, uh, glitter shield brightness. Oh, well, it definitely, yeah, that, that definitely affects the HUD brightness. It doesn't really help those digits down there, though. Uh, we are past Mach 2 now. 46,000 feet. Our fuel consumption is... Each engine 1,100 pounds per hour, I guess? No, it can't be that. Right? I... I well, the digits does, don't make any sense, because... Pounds per hour times 10 is... It's definitely more than that. <laughs> so, uh... Yeah. Hmm... Uh, range... May maybe... If we ignore the pounds per hour times 10 thing... Maybe it's 10,000? In which case, we have... Uh, hour, which would make sense if it's 11,000 pounds per engine per hour, then that's 22,000. And we've got it seems like 26,000 there, so a little bit more than an hour's worth, which seems reasonable. Supposedly, the maximum speed for the F 14 is Mach 2.34. Range 1,600 nautical miles. Service ceiling, well, it says 53,000, but it's possible that it could have gotten higher than that. We are at Mach 2.24 right now. It's not noticeably, well, it's still creeping up, so we'll see. So we are now well into Arizona. Well, I, I probably would never use the autopilot, but it's over there. I don't trust it very much past Mach 1, though. Uh, 
remembering my experiences from the F-15. It says it's got stability augmentation, but I don't believe it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'll leave that be for now. Honestly, uh, if you're getting this plane, I, I don't know why you would want to use autopilot. It's pretty stable right now, just trimmed out. It's not going to be a long flight, unless you're really trying for range here. 1,300 knot true airspeed, Mach 2.3 there. We're going down though. wonder what the speed limit on it is. We're at 845 knots indicated. Well, that's Phoenix. But we only have 77% of our fuel left. So, getting across the country, I don't think so. But, I mean, I was not expecting that anyway. That would have been suspicious if we had been able to do that uh, with full afterburner. Of course, if we weren't going full afterburner, there's a chance, but... You know, when the direct light isn't hitting them, the side panels don't look that bad. Not too bad right now. Not distracting, anyway. Right now, it looks pretty good. I appreciate the wear on the throttle levers. It's tough getting everything right in different lighting conditions. We have three quarters of our fuel left up. We're going too far north. Roughly going 50,000 feet here. But it does have uh, our next waypoint there. It says 88 degrees, so it's got that. Holding around Mach 2.3, 51,000 feet. Well, at least we can say it doesn't seem to outperform the actual F-14. Um, whether the F-14 would have its this kind of range with uh, Mach 2.3 flight. That's a whole sto different story, but don't change it, please. <laughs> I like going fast. And we have long distances to cover. Okay, approaching our next waypoint. Landscape looking pretty good, at least from this side. I'm sure it looks good close up too. Speed is stable, altitude stable-ish. Right now the front dials look a bit weird with the worn out thing. At least I'd expect a digit face to not have that. If you know what I mean, uh, the, the glass portion would probably be different looking. Well, we have passed Holman, and we have about half our fuel left. Though, of course, we used a bit more in the climbs, so... Well, Texas is big. <laughs> we gotta take some time getting through it. Okay, we are 430 nautical miles from Ellington now. It's a ways. And the landscape of Texas. Yep, cruising right along, stable as anything. We're creeping up in height, but not substantially. And that probably improves efficiency, maybe? I haven't double checked the fuel consumption at different altitudes. Creeping up in height is pretty normal as the fuel load gets lighter. So, nothing to stop. The Concorde does that as well. Obviously, in real life, one should not be going past the speed of sound over land, but this is not real life. 
is one of the joys of Flight Sim that we don't have to obey such rules. The Sim has so far done a fairly good job of keeping up with us. Nothing too horrible. Mach 2 has proceeded quite smoothly over the United States, which is, you know, reasonably scenery complicated. Okay, so we are now just past Austin. Somewhere back there is Austin. I don't think we're gonna see buildings at this height, so... We are around here. You can see Chaos back there. And we have 23% of our fuel left. Now I don't know how much is unusable. We're still cruising right along. We could probably just deplete it and try and glide down to somewhere. There's plenty of airports around. I think I can see Houston over there. 18% of our fuel though. I think maybe New Orleans would be a good place to land. I feel like that's probably as far as we're gonna get. Okay, flying over Houston here. Okay, yep, I'm gonna start descending. So, we are 220 nautical miles away from New Orleans. I'm not lying at an Air Force base there. It will just be the regular airport, KMSY. Still technically over Mach 1, Mach 1.5-ish. Yeah, uh, well, I, this dial says Mach 1.52. On the screen here, it says Mach 1.7. So, there's some sort of mismatch there. Maybe this is based on ground speed? Does that make sense? No. No, the speed of sound, the thing we're interested in is the airframe for that. So, not really. Uh, yeah, those two should match. So, that's interesting. As far as getting extra lift as the wings extend, it seems to. And drag as well. But I'd have to do a little bit more rigorous testing to be sure of that. I'm pretty sure the fuel consumption is linear. Let's see. Is there a discontinuity in fuel consumption based on using afterburner? Well, it seems to consume it more dramatically when the afterburner is on, okay. So the, it's not a complete on-off discontinuity. And we've got bingo fuel, it says so up there. So bingo indicator functional. No sound, I think, but, but maybe it was because I wasn't in the cockpit at the time. We're down to 3% now, which is not great. Maybe I should have just gone faster for longer. Okay, we... Uh, that, the... yeah. Unsweeping the wings has given us way more... oh, there goes the engine. <laughs> okay. What kind of airports do we have around here? K I Y A K A R A Kara. Oh, Kara is just like right there. Um, let's see if we've got air uh, speed brakes. Oh, they don't want to deploy. Oh, there they are. Uh, okay, we do have speed brakes. I I don't think we can approach like this. I don't know, maybe. This is pretty dramatic. Oh, this is a bad idea. Okay. K 
gear down and speed brakes in. Okay, more speed brakes. Speed brakes in. More speed brakes. <laughs> I hope the gear is down. Okay, the speed brakes, more flaps. There's something on the other side. <laughs> Oops. Well, there's an emergency landing, darn it. Should have called it in. Oh. Oh, we're not going down very quickly, are we? Oh! Hmm. I thought I was pretty slow. Maybe I, I was too hard? Okay, well, it looks like I'm going to have to work on landing the sucker. I guess I'll have to practice on that. But there you have it, the F-14. It looks good. Probably would prefer it over the F-15. It looks like they did a little bit better work on it. Um, and it's cheaper. Depends on what you want out of the thing, of course. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.